And we are live. Greetings, Otaku Faithful. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. Once again, this is Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief. And I'm finally back after a brief, unplanned hiatus. Uh, but I'm finally back. And I'm here to bring you all the first manga review that I've done in, in years. It's been a very, very long time since we did a manga review. But anywho... This afternoon's manga review has been brought to you all courtesy of OAW patron and longtime OAW faithful Carlos Emmanuel Ortiz, who should, I believe, I saw him in the chat. I think he's watching. Carlos, once again, shout out to you, fam. I know I'm late on this one. I know I'm late on it, but, but I'm, fine. I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I'm catching up. Uh, all right. So today we are going to go ahead and discuss make sure i get the the name and the pronunciation correct so today i'm going to give you all my first impressions of the science fiction slash slice of life manga entitled yokohama kaidashi kiko which can be translated to yokohama shopping log or record of a yokohama shopping trip now I will be discussing the first three chapters, but the manga in it of itself ran for 17, vo I'm sorry, 14 volumes from June of 94 to February of 06. And I do believe that this series is available um, in its entirety here in the state so you can actually go out and you can um you can actually go out and you can find the volumes and you can check out the english translations now unfortunately i did read it online just because uh just you know just just, just due to the to a time constraint but um if you all are interested in this series after i'm done with my review by all means i highly recommend that you support the official release. All right, so let's jump into it. So, as I mentioned before, Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko is it's both a science fiction and it's a slice of life manga. Essentially, the concept, the conceit for this manga series is that it takes place in the not too distant future in a post-apocalyptic world, um but it's one of those where from what I've gathered in the first three chapters, it see, it's, it's one of those where there was some type of environmental event that decreased the human population. So, um, so yeah, so populations down. And with that void, we start seeing sort of like nature take over again. A lot of the landscapes and a lot of the background work um, th this isn't one of the the desolate ap post apocalyptic worlds. It, um, it's sort of like that. Once the humans are gone, nature kind of takes back over again. Um, so, oh snap! Do we have some lag? Apologies for that. This is actually the f one of the. Well, this is the first stream since. Okay. Everybody else is good. All right. So we'll, we'll keep it moving. We'll keep it moving. So anywho. So uh, so that is the backdrop for this manga series. Post-apocalyptic. Um, humans are scarce. Nature's starting to take over again. And we are introduced to our main protagonist, who uh, is an android. Funny enough, she is an android named Alpha, and she runs a, a coffee shop out in the countryside. And so essentially... The manga tells the stories of her and her neighbors as they just go about, you know, their everyday lives, while at the same time, there's a couple of instances where there's some type of sci-fi element introduced into the story. And so it's about how they react and engage um, and encounter these sort of sci-fi elements, if you will. Um, so. So that that's pretty much like the the overarching concept of the series, um, just from a first impressions glance, first glance, first impressions. Right. First takeaway. All right. So right now I'm going to talk about 
some pros and cons of the series from what I've observed, from what I've read so far, things I think work really well, things I think work not too well. So the first thing I think I, that works really well, and it's probably the best thing about the manga, is the artwork. Now, in terms of the character designs, the way in which they're drawn, I can t I could tell straight off the bat when I first started reading it, this is an old school style manga. It's 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 very uh, I would say very traditionalist, very very old school. Um, and you can tell um, it's done by a, a seasoned artist, someone who's practiced the style, a lot of the aesthetics for a very long time. There are a lot of there are a lot of panels, um, the way in which they're constructed, the way in which I, I really wish I could do screen share with you guys. But unfortunately, since I'm using YouTube's webcam, just straight streaming from the webcam instead of Hangouts, I'm not I, I haven't figured out how to do screen share yet. But but if you look at the artwork, like a lot of it is um, is is very traditional. Um, if you guys have ever read, you know, if you if you've read any old school manga, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see a lot of like the common um, the common panel placement where the common shots, you know, some of the, the worm eye view shots, some of the uh, the long range shots, the way in which they're constructed is, is very old school. Um, for a second, I was even taken aback because some of these panels looked like, like, I feel like I've seen some of this work before because I have a couple of uh, how to draw manga books. I, I mean, a couple. I have several how to draw manga books. And I feel like with some of the examples that they give you in those books, I feel like they've, they've used panels from this series before. It wouldn't surprise me. But that's why it looks so familiar. But the best thing about the artwork is definitely the landscapes. The landscapes, by far, no holds barred. You don't need to clap. Uh, you, you you really don't need to qualify this. The landscapes are outstanding. They're really, 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 really good. They're really good, and it, it's another one of those examples. You'd be amazed, given the fact that this is you know a standard manga. The level of detail in those big double page spreads where we get to see the environment. Really, really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. And here's the other thing too, with the uh, with the post apocalyptic like human void nature taking over thing. There's a serious Miyazaki vibe in a lot of these landscapes. The way in which like there's one of them. One of the most popular ones is um, it's the scene where Alpha rides her bike past the the old uh, Yokohama airport, and you see where the planes have been left and you can see like the greenery starting to uh to you know just cover up the planes and stuff like that and and I bring out Miyazaki because the level of detail it's not just in the landscape itself it's also in the the uh the items that are in these landscapes so like when you see the 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 double page I'm talking about double page spread the level of detail on the plane itself is 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 really precise um, so yeah, it, it's some really good work. Like I said, it's 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 very much akin to what you would see if you've ever seen uh, Laputa, Castle in the Sky. If you ever seen that, if you ever seen uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, it's it's that same sort of uh, it's it's that same sort of thing. So uh, that was really cool. So the artwork I think is actually the best thing about the manga. Now. What do I think is actually the worst thing about the manga? Granted, take this with a grain of salt, because let's be real about this. A lot of manga, especially early on, it's a slow burn. So I read the first three chapters, which is about, I think it's about 80 pages, 84, because the first chapter is like 44 pages or so. And then each chapter after that is about 22. So I read somewhere about like 84, 85 pages, right? And in the first three chapters, you have 
your first chapter was just the introductory chapter, right? So that kind of introduces us to the characters, to the world. And it, it's very much a place setter because nothing really happens in that first chapter other than you get to meet the characters. You get a, a real brief establishment of what their relationship is, but, but nothing grandiose. Chapter two, which I think is the best chapter I've read so far, is sort of the first incident where we get like a sci-fi element out of nowhere. And I kind of got the sense like this is sort of what the normal vibe of the series would be. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of like the, uh, the 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 sci-fi element of the of, of the week. Right. Like if this was a TV show, it's like, OK, it's like our main character is an android. But in the second chapter, we introduce this legend of this folk myth of a local wildling girl and uh, she's immortal. She never ages. She avoids humans. But, you know, if you're out in the wilderness, you'll see her sort of this like elusive creature thing. Right. So I so I got the sense I was like, oh, OK, so, yeah. So this is what we're going to be doing every chapter. Right. It's going to be that one strange thing, you know, like a stranger tale. Right. But then we get to chapter three and it's all about watermelons and how the the local uh, gas station owner, who's also a farmer, he had a surplus of watermelons for that year and he couldn't he has more than he can eat. He has more than he can sell. So he just started giving them away. Right. And he goes to Alpha in the coffee shop and he gives, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, I'll take a couple of melons. He's like, nah, I'm not, like, you, you got to take the whole truck. And she's like, what am I going to do with all those watermelons? Are, are, are you serious? So then she comes up with the ideas like, well, I'll just give them away to my customers. Like it's a free, free giveaway. So she kind of uses the, the coffee shop as sort of like the uh, I guess you could say the disbursement. Right. But uh, but that's pretty much it. Right. So I started reading chapter four. But the reason why I'm not including chapter four in this review, because I didn't finish it. But uh, I get the sense because I think chapter four starts off with like a lightning storm. So I'm going to go back to that one because I only read like the first two or three pages. Um, but so the thing is, the 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 manga, the storytelling, the narrative, it's slow. It starts off slow. That's the only real criticism I have about it. It starts off kind of slow. But that but that's that's typical, especially at the start of manga. And. For people who may not be familiar with manga outside of either the shonen or the seinen genres, you're not accustomed to that because you're accustomed to mangas that are very much um, action oriented. They are very much plot driven. They have a point. They have like specific um specific story beats they have specific objectives that they need to be able to meet within a certain um, amount of pages so like to give you an example of what i'm talking about like fairy tale for an example like the i remember way back when you're talking about 2000 what was that 2010 when we reviewed the first chapter a fairy tale and that was like 96 pages but the reason why it was that long is because that manga had a lot of ground to cover in its first chapter so that once you got to chapter two is just get the ball rolling this one isn't written like that so um it's it's really written to kind of get you in um not necessarily invested but to get you engaged with the world it wants you to spend time in what this place is like and what this world is like before we really start introducing more and more um, sci-fi uh, sci and fantastical elements. But that being said, stand by what I said. Chapter two is definitely the best one. It's the, it's the best of the first three. Um, it's, it's really solid. It's really well paced. Um, I, I dug the, the mystery, the mystique about the Masago, which is the wildling girl. Um, I like how I believe his name is Takahito, the, the young man who encounters her. Like, I like how that happens. And like I say, it, it's one of those like stranger tales type of things. It was really cool. Um, I, I was hoping that they would pick up from that in the third one. They didn't. But I'm but I know they uh, they pick up with that later on because I kind of. I read the Wikipedia page and I know she's a reoccurring character. So I know they'll bring her back. All right. So anything else I want to talk about 
with the manga so far. Let's see, we're about 15 minutes in. Artwork's the best. Pacing, not so much. Well, no, that's not true. Now, nah, yeah, I have, I have to take that back. I can't really say that about the pacing because each individual chapter is actually paced pretty well. Um, so I can't really say that the pacing is bad. It's not. It's just that it's slow. Um, all right. Other than that, I think that might wrap it up for this review. Because like I said, it's more of a first impression than a comprehensive one. Um, but like I said, if you like Slice of Life, if nothing else is definitely worth checking out for for the artwork alone, right? But if you but if you like one of those kind of like Stranger Tales type of stories, you know, um, if you're like a Twilight Zone fan or an Outer Limits fan or anything like that, where you like sort of like the serialized story, because that's the other thing too. There isn't really so far as I can deduce, there isn't an overarching plot. Every chapter is its own self-contained story. Um, so if you like that style of storytelling, I would definitely recommend you at least checking it out. Like I said, at least for the first like three to four chapters. Um, chapter two is the best indicator of what I what I think that that what what makes this manga um, a really fun read. Check out chapter two. Chapter two is cool. Chapter two is cool. All right. So that's going to wrap up this review. Now, real quick, because I am going to do a brief Q&A real quick, um, just because I haven't heard from you guys in forever. And uh, and I also do want to kind of uh, update you all with a little bit more housekeeping and whatnot. So real quick, I do want to mention this. I went ahead and I attached the manga of the month uh, banner to the title of this video because that used to be my monthly manga review series way back when. I know it's been forever since I've done a manga of the month, right? Like way, way long time ago. So uh, I attached it to this one. If you all are interested in seeing me review more manga, by all means, I have a tier for that on Patreon. It's a $25 tier. Um, and with that, not only do you get to request a manga for me to review, but you also get access to all Patreon exclusive content. You get access to the OAW Vault, which are the, um, the original anime and manga reviews that me and my colleagues did when the channel first launched way back when. Uh, funny enough, I'll, I'll, I'll drop, a, I'll mention this very briefly. Funny enough, I just got done uploading the ones for this month and I started coming across videos I forgot we did. And I was like, dude, I can't believe we did that. So the one that just went up this past, what was it? I think it was Thursday, a couple of days ago, is our top 10 greatest comic book superheroes of all time. Uh, and that was with me and my former colleague, Christopher Stelly. We we just went down the list. Um, it was a sort of both of us. We did it together. I, I totally forgot we did that video. I was like, wow, okay, cool, right? So that's the one that just went up, right? And then... The one that's coming up this Monday, oh, it was the first rant that we ever did where we talked about Hollywood anime adaptations. And that one, I, and I think that is the OAW debut of my, of my good friend, Mr. Ryan Jones. I think that was his first time on camera. And me and him, we, we did a rant talking about a, uh, yeah, anime, live action anime adaptations in the West. Boy, how many times have I talked about that since? But it, it was funny just going back, rewatching that. Like, that was the first. I was like, man, I can't, I forgot we did that, right? So, anyway, so as I mentioned, at that $25 tier on Patreon, you get to request it's a manga or it's a, a, um, a, an, um, a Western comic book. It's it's e either or. So it doesn't just have to be manga. It can be a comic as well. And the way I usually do it, it is the first two to three chapters of a manga, because like I said, the first manga chapter is usually pretty long. So it's either the first two to three chapters of a manga or the first three issues of an American comic. At that $25 tier, you, you get to request one for me to review. You get access to all Patreon exclusive content. You get access to the OAW vault. And of course, you get an on-camera shout out 
at the beginning of your video. All of that's available at the $25 tier. So if you feel so inclined, by all means, the link is in the description box below. That's patreon.com slash OAW. By all means, hit your boy up. It, I'm currently accepting requests for September because I'm booked for the rest of this month. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally booked. I actually got to catch up on a lot of videos. So, but it, it um, it's currently open for September. There's only four spots for that tier though. So if you want them, get them in. All right. And of course, if I do get more uh, requests, I will cons like, it, it won't just be a monthly thing. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if I get four requests at that tier, I'll do four within the month, you know, it, it'll, it'll, it can be a weekly thing, but that's available. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and give you all a couple of updates about some stuff that's been going on. So first and foremost, let's talk about some technical stuff. I am going to be trying out a couple of different, um, a couple of different softwares, a couple of different platforms and whatnot, because so since, uh, YouTube has finally gone away since Google actually has done away with hangouts, there's a, you know, in order to sort of get the whole streaming thing back up and running, there's some al some alternatives that I need to seek out. Right now, I'm leaning towards StreamYard very hard because I've, I've some some of the guys I follow on YouTube, they've they've switched over to that. And I've heard good things about it, heard that it's, it's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to check that out. I'm also thinking about doing restream so that I can stream both on here and to like Facebook or to Twitter or whatever. So I'm also looking into that. And if you all have not heard yet, OAW is on Twitch. Yep. Finally went ahead and started up a Twitch channel because I finally figured out how to stream straight from my Xbox One to Twitch. So uh, I did a test stream. I haven't done a first like official stream yet, but I will be doing a weekly series on Twitch for the... 16 weeks of the NFL season. All right, I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna do, be doing a series with me playing through an NFL season right along with my favorite team. Who that? I'm gonna call it Stunting with the Saints. All right, that's what it's gonna be called. It's gonna be called Stunting with the Saints. It's gonna be every week on Twitch. All right, uh, that's gonna start. What so what is it? The first week of September is the when um. When the NFL season kicks off. So that's when that series is going to kick off. Um, in the meantime, I will be doing random Twitch streams, um, playing through other modes on, on Madden 20. Um, I want to go ahead and start up the face of the franchise mode. Uh, so far, I've just been practicing, trying to get my stick, you know, my, my stick skills up. Right. So I just been practicing. But uh, but I'm going to be streaming. I'll also be streaming through the face of the franchise mode. But that won't necessarily be a weekly segment. Stunting with the Saints, that will be every week. I'm, it's probably going to be every, it's either going to be every Tuesday or Wednesday. In starting uh, first week of September, all the way until the end of the regular season. Unless we make the playoffs, baby, and then we're going in the playoffs. You know we're going in the playoffs. All right, yeah. Until the NFL screws us up again. All right. All right, so that's what's going to be going on, on Twitch. I'm um, also I got other games that I'm going to be streaming on Twitch as well. I'll finally get around to uh, Jump Force because I specifically bought that game so that I could stream. And I know a lot of people. I mean, because the game is old now, considered old now. I know a lot of people already played through it. A lot of people already know what it's about. This, this, that, and the third. I'm I I know nothing. I know nothing. I'm John Snow in this. I know nothing. I haven't played it. I haven't played it yet. Um, I haven't read of what the story is about. None of that jazz is going to be fresh for me. So that's one game I got. Um, let's see. What's the other ones I got? Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, which is the conclusion of Shippuden. I got that. I got Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Don't know how much I'm going to be streaming that, but, you know, pick up game every now and then. Um, Batman Telltale Parts 1 and 2. I will be streaming those because I've been meaning to play through those for a while, even though I even though I know what happens in those games. Like I still want to be able to like play through it myself and do what I want to kind of do, because the guys that I've seen play through that game, they've done things that I, I was like, nah, I wouldn't have done that. I would have done this. This is that. Anyway, that's another one that's I'm going to be doing. Um, I have UFC three. That one I'll probably get around to doing at some point um, until the new one comes out, in which case we got to upgrade. But anywho, so, yeah. So keep an eye out. Damn dogs. 
keep an eye out. Make sure that you follow um, that you follow OAW Entertainment on Facebook, that you follow me on Twitter. And of course, keep an eye out on the channel. I will update you all whenever I go online to go stream or you can go ahead. Sub to sub to the uh, the Twitch right now. Uh, Twitch.com. What is it? Twitch.com slash OAW underscore entertainment. Yeah, I need to start putting that link. I actually let me messing around here with you guys. Uh, I am going to drop it in the comments right now. So that is the link to OAW Twitch. All right. Now, let's go ahead for the next about five to ten minutes. Let's kick off some of these questions. Bring them in. Bring them in. All right. So what we got, let's see. Do, 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 do. Have you heard about the decline of sales from Marvel and DC Comics and that manga is crushing the industry? I have heard that. I heard Marvel. Um, was suffering a decline in their comic sales, but Marvel they've they've kind of been suffering ever since uh, Civil War Two. Their sales have not been the same since ever since Civil War Two, and that was Civil War Two was what twenty sixteen. So they've they've been struggling for the last three years. Um, the last boom in sales that Marvel had, if memory serves, was when they did um, Hydra Cap. In uh, what was that? Uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America, number one. That was uh, was that Dan? Was that Dan Slot? I think Dan Slot. Anyway, but yeah, when when they turned Cap into a Hydra agent, that was the last like major big seller that Marvel had. They've they've kind of been uh, they've been struggling since. Um, now I didn't know that DC was suffering just because I'm hearing nothing about good things coming out of DC. Ever since Rebirth started, DC's, from what I've been hearing, man, uh, hit after hit after hit. And I mean, Tom King, all the work he's done for DC since since he joined, um, you know, with Rebirth. I mean, dude, he just won the Eisner for Best Writer. And he won that with, what, four different titles? So, I mean, and then uh, Greg Capullo, he just renewed his contract at DC. Um, I know that they got Bendis over there now. Uh, I've heard I've heard nothing but good things about DC. But if DC is suffering in sales too, I, I guess that kind of doesn't surprise me. Um, they can't possibly be doing as bad as Marvel is, though. Um, but this notion that manga is actually dominating the sales in the states, I totally believe that. I totally believe that. Yeah, good for them. Oh, okay. Let's see. Hey, Larry, I really want to ask you, are you going to look at Crisis on Infinite Earths event on CW this year and make a review of it possibly? I don't know, man. I, I dropped all the CW shows with the exception of uh, Black Lightning because um, I really like Black Lightning in season one. I haven't watched season two yet, but like I dropped Arrow years ago. I dropped Flash years ago. Um, I never really picked up Supergirl, not really. And then Legends, I dropped after season one. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh man, Trent, dude, you didn't have to. You didn't have to super. I mean, I appreciate the super chat, Trent. Trent, you didn't have to super chat that, my man. Um. Yes, Trent. We yes, I I did I did get your message for advice corner. It's locked in. It's happening. This Trent. We are going to do your advice corner sometime. Hang on, let me check my schedule real quick. Let me check my schedule real quick. Today's the eleventh. We are going to do it either next week or the week after, but it's going to be before the end of the month. We are we're, we're going to do your advice corner, dude. I got your request. I got your message. It's locked in. I just got to figure out which day in the next two weeks that I want to go ahead and do it. But I'll let you know which day. But yes, Trent, I got I got you. bro. I got you. Um, I remember I think you requested getting you go and Uber in on this one. I don't know if I can guarantee whether or not they'll show up, but I'll hit them when, when I when I when I. uh 
maybe I'll hit them up first, see when they're free, and then maybe schedule around when we could potentially work them in. But I got you, Trent. Don't worry about that. I got you. All right. So let's see. Go ahead and refresh the chat real quick. I don't think there's any other questions. All right. So 30 minutes. Great. Um, oh, this is the final thing I forgot. So in terms of the uploading schedule on the on the OAW YouTube channel. All right. So. This is what we're going to do. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I heard about Kevin Conroy. Yeah, yeah. I, I I've been keeping I've been keeping up with the um. Uh, I have been keeping up with the news about Crisis. I just don't know if I'm gonna watch it. That's 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 just my thing. All right. So finally, I'll give you all an update. What's going to be going on in terms of the streaming schedule on YouTube? So I do want to go back to. Um, the one, the weekly late night live stream, OAW late night, the way I used to do it. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do it where it's like, you know, it's one big show and then I go back and I chop it up into smaller segments. I don't think I'm going to do that necessarily. And that's just because I want each live stream to be a review just like this one is. Um, and of course all of the, the content for that is, is Patreon generated. Um, especially this month. Cause, cause I got what? One, two, three, four, five. I got like five more vids to do that are all Patreon, uh, Patreon funded. So, but essentially that is gonna be what I'm I want to do with the YouTube channel moving forward. At least one stream a week, bare minimum, one. And you know, it'll be a review or it'll be an advice corner or whatever it is for that for that week. But of course, as more Patreon requests, as more pledges come in, that's just gonna increase. The amount that, you know, I stream a week. Um, what I'll also be doing, though, is I'm going to finally kick off those those live commentaries that I've been talking about doing, um, especially I want to do that for the movies that have been requested via Patreon. So that way, when you all request movies for me to review on Patreon, technically you'll be getting two videos because you'll be getting the live commentary and then you'll be getting the review. So technically you're getting two. Um, I haven't started that yet, but I'm, I'm going to start doing that uh, because I'm, I have to sit down and watch the movies anyway. I might as well record myself so you guys can get like my my raw, you know, sort of reactions as is. And then, of course, we re will refine it. We'll clean it up. We'll streamline it. We'll make it nice and pretty when when I actually present the review. So. Keep an eye out for those, though, the only problem with the live commentary. And I know it's a problem for me to fix, but this is the only problem with the live commentaries. As it is right now, those are going to be on the fly. So, like, I don't even I don't really know when I'll be doing them because I'll kind of just be squeezing them in throughout the week. Um, so, for an example, like I'll probably do one this week, if not two this week, but I don't know when. It, it, it all depends on my schedule and it all depends on when I'm going to have those two to three hours that I can cut out just to do that. You know what I'm saying? But once again, that's another reason. Like OAW Entertainment on Facebook, follow OAW on Twitter because I will inform you all when I go live. And of course, I'm going to be doing those live streams on YouTube. What makes them Patreon exclusive is that you'll only have access to them while they are live once i'm done with that with that commentary it's going straight to patreon so you won't be able to go back and watch it unless you're uh you're a patron um i'm also going to announce here but i'm going to update i'm going to update it officially tomorrow i am changing the one dollar tier on patreon so this is what is going to this is what's going to happen I'm, ch I'm i'm making changes to the one and five dollar tier which are my two bottom tiers. Um, the $1 tier, you're supposed to get early access to content before it comes out on YouTube. Since I'm primarily streaming, there are no pre-recorded videos. So you're actually not getting any early access. This is what I'm going to do for the $1 tier. I'm going to change it to where at the $1 tier, you get any Patreon exclusive content except for the OAW vault. The OAW vault videos will still be at the $5 tier. 
but any other Patreon exclusive video. So like the commentaries, you'll have access to those at that $1 tier. For the $5 tier, since you guys have the OAW vault, but that's also supposed to include the exclusive content, I am going to start implementing a monthly live hangout session. So it's, it's going to be it's going to be a, just like how we used to do. Um, I'm going to have to work it out with StreamYard or whatever, because I think StreamYard, you can only do like six people total. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do live sessions. It's either going to be on camera, like via StreamYard, or it might just be a Discord hangout. One of the two. But you guys at the $5 tier, you guys will get invited to join into the monthly live hangout. And we'll hang out for like an hour, two hours. Was that? It's going to be like towards the end of the month on one of the nights where I'm just hanging out, playing games or something. And we'll just chop it up and hang out and, you know, converse about stuff and, you know, kick the ideas at each other and all that type of jazz. We're just going to hang out and kick it. Um, but I'm going to do that at least once a month. And that's going to be for everybody at that five dollar tier and higher. Right. So that's going to be the change coming to Patreon officially tomorrow. One dollar tier. You get access to all Patreon exclusive content minus the OAW vote. Five dollar tier is going to be OAW vote and the live hangout invite. And then, of course, the, the 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30 dollar tiers. Those will remain the same for the time being. Um, I might start making I might make changes to that ten dollar tier um, in terms of the. The credit the official credit that you get for being in an OAW patron. But I have an idea of how I can do that credit with the live streams. So that's why I haven't made any changes to that tier yet, because I, I think I have a way of working that in. But also the thing is, I don't have anybody at that tier yet. So we'll see. All right. So with a few, let's see, do I have any more? Okay. Are you going to stream Batman Telltale season one and two? Yes, I am. Yes, Jaden. Batman Telltale one and two. I, I'm going to stream that on Twitch. I don't know when I'm going to do it. I'm thinking of doing it in October because it's going to be Halloween and, you know, Batman Halloween. I'm thinking of doing it as a series in October, but I'm definitely going to do it. It's, and it's going to be on Twitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to go ahead, thank everybody who stopped by to watch this live. Thank everybody who's watching this after a fact, after the fact. Um, once again, if you have yet to do so, please feel free. If you like, if you like this review, go ahead, like it, share it. Um, once again, if you have yet to do so, if you're checking out the channel for the first time, welcome. Thank you again for uh for joining me. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, become a subscriber, subscribe to OEW entertainment on YouTube. Make sure you click that bell icon. Cause I found out at the start of this stream, right before I went live that, uh, that some of you guys didn't even get notified on the live stream. Like they, like some, some of my guys just saw it. They just saw it on YouTube, but they never got a notification about it. So make sure you click that bell icon so that you get notifications. And then also uh, like OAW Entertainment on Facebook, follow me on Twitter because I always update. Whenever I go live, I always update on there as well. So if you don't get the notification via YouTube, you can also get it on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and also, if you want to support OAW Entertainment, if you uh, want to request content for me to produce for the channel, whether that be a movie review, a TV show review, anime review, manga review, comic book review, anything like that, by all means, Check me out on Patreon, patreon.com slash O-A-W. If you have yet to do so, subscribe to the Twitch channel because we on Twitch now. Twitch.com slash O-A-W underscore entertainment. That link is in the comments. I linked it in the comments. All right. And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, O-A-W Commander Chief. I am signing off and I will catch you all next time. Peace.